<clears throat> okay, YouTubers, I'm going to catch up on some things. I've been kind of behind on filming, but uh, a lot to catch up on. This is the motor, and I estimate that it'll be putting out about 14 horsepower. So uh, I decided to go with the Makuni carburetor because the uh, the good adjustability to it. And I'm test fitting the manifold. Actually, I'd like to find a manifold to come straight out. Uh, for a breather, I'm just using a, a an oil fuel filter. And I just cut the, the other part where it goes into it out. And I just connected it straight to it like that. Um, a, a neat little trick. Uh, let me show you here. Now, normally, right here, there's an insulator. Like I say, I'm just testing things out right now. And you need the insulator because that heat from this head will transfer to this manifold because it's metal and then to the carburetor and that's not good. Right here is the insulator and this this is the way it fits out. This little tab on the right side is to hold the spark plug wire and the second one is to hold the uh, fuel line. And uh, I guess this bottom piece just blocks it off down there because there's a you can see down there there's a hole right down through there. But anyhow, uh, my trick is, man, this, uh, this gasket just fell right off on this side. But my trick uh, for you guys is on this side is the transition side because the head port is a D-shaped. And so I took a rat tail file and just hand profiled this using this gasket that was here. Now I'm trying to get the gasket off. This is plastic and I'm using plastic scrapers. I'm soaking it with... Uh, liquid wrench to try to get this to where it'll come off easier and I'm not trying to mess the surface up. Now I made my own gaskets. I went down to O'Reilly's and I bought this uh, rubber fiber sheet from uh, Felpro. I've been doing this for years making my own gaskets. And it comes in a, in a nice roll like that. And you can see where I cut that section off right there. Yeah, Felpro. Anyhow, all I did was I took the marker, I took the gaskets, which were right over here. You can see the green gaskets in that kit. I just took them out and I laid them on that piece of paper there, or that gasket material, traced it out with my marker, and then I took this just regular old hole puncher and just punched around. I punched the outside holes and then I took a scissors and cut the outside. Now I cut it a little bit wide but I did that on purpose and then I just you know trimmed around the edge and I you can see the notches and stuff on it but I trimmed it to where the black line is gone so that'll be okay. But these gaskets are thicker. Um, they're just better material. The stock the stock ones are as thin as this is, and that's not good. You need to have something that will give and squish more to get. Because one thing I think that is a constant problem with these Predator motors is that this area right here is where you get vacuum leaks. I think this is the number one problem right here is this thing on these Predator motors. Because I think it's all right in this area. The, this part sticks out. This one's against the head. This one sticks out. And I think this is the culprit area right here. But anyhow, I, I did some painting. I painted the tin, painted the, the gas tank, um, test fitting, all that stuff. I'll be pulling that off. I, you can see I don't have a, a screw in there because i got to go to like a three-quarter inch. I'll have to get the uh, screw out and take it down and find one that's three-quarter inch. I uh, haven't got my jets in. Um, I got two more motors I'm working on. That's why I got these Makunis. I got my pilot jets in. Uh, I got my main jets in. I just don't know where the heck I put the, the stupid things at. So I reordered them today. I did a header wrap on my header. I started down here. I did two wraps. Then I come all the way up. And I tip on this is to grab it and twist it and roll it to you get here to the end and use these hose clamps use stainless steel 
and hold them down. But you you roll and work with this thing all the way down, and then hose clamp it down, and this stays nice and tight and good on there. Try not to get let this get wet because it will soak in. This will soak in and keep that moisture inside there. So try not to let this get wet. And that will keep that header from rusting out on the inside. Another tri uh, tip for you guys. But um, here is, I bought a, a rear rim off a DB10. That will be the Motovox. And uh, I'm painting it the same color to match the frame. But uh, the tires I got are a four ply. And uh, this side will be the, I can't remember which side it is. One side is, uh, yeah, it'll be the other side I'll put the disc on, disc brake on. And I uh, went to class and I cut a, uh, a tab and I welded it uh, on the front right here. So I have a disc brake caliper that'll mount up right there and I have my front brakes on this. That's my back rim. I'm painting one side, then I'll paint the other side, then I'll install the tire. But uh, here's the frame. Um, I was painting it with some Rust-Oleum to uh, give it some color and some protection. Um, you remember uh, I added a brace up top here and I added one down low. Now I just painted it black a little while ago so that way it kind of disappears. And I'll have to touch it up a little bit. But um, and it, you can see a little run right there but I'll, I'll just touch that up. But I got a motor plate PMR right there, but I'm thinking on just going without it because between there and that top frame, that stock gas tank won't fit. And I could get a half inch of clearance or so or more, and if I drop it down and just mount the motor, you can see I've got holes already, but I'll have to try just re recheck it again. Get it as far forward as I can, remount the holes, and but I have to make sure it's lined up when I get everything uh, set up for the back wheel, the, the sprockets, and then I'll have to come up with some sort of way to adjust the uh, chain uh, system right there. That'll probably be the way I have to do that. But um, I experimented with a. Uh, a hinge up here. I think I'll just go back to the stock system. Use the uh, three bolts to hold it down because um, I'm not going to have a uh, a tank under the seat system for now. Uh, you can see the two disc brake uh, two disc brakes right there. There's the extra caliper. Um, just uh, that's where I'm at right now. This, I got to looking at it as far as bracing wise, the tube diameter, I got to looking, you know, how much weld is compared to the two flat bars. And there's a lot more surface area, so that should add a lot of strength on both of them to the front end right there. And that's the reason why I did that. And especially since I'm going to have a, a disc brake up there. Um, I want that all to be a, a good long lasting unit. But the motor looked really good. I painted the block flat black. Now I got a extreme cam in there. I think it's extreme. What is it? It's dyno cam. Yeah, sorry. Dyno cam. It's the same lift but more duration and uh, it just bolted in so it's not going to add any more valve lift. It just makes the, uh, the valves stay off the seat longer. So I think it looks pretty good with the flat black block and uh, stuff like that. Um, I'll look at some air filters here shortly. But uh, like I say, I'm just piecing stuff and putting stuff together. Got to get that cleaned up. And uh, that's where I'm at right now. So, you know, uh, when it comes along, you got to work on stuff. Uh, the breather system, that's a pretty neat idea. They got these billet ones that, that mount up and look pretty sharp and that's a neat idea. I think it mount, mounts somewhere up here on this, this pad but I'm not sure. 
but I got to find some screws that fit right in here. There's no clearance. I'd like to find a manifold that just makes it come straight out. I think that'd be okay. I got room. My leg is going to be in this forward area up here, so there's really no clearance issue right there. And uh, that's the rims, and then this the tires. I'm running a four ply with a knobby, so I'll have plenty of traction. So that'll be pretty cool. But anyhow, uh, that's where I'm at, and you guys have a good one. Catch you later.